So last time we we had reviewed the material for first three modules of implementation science course and today we will just go through the material for uh, module four five and six which is qualitative research uh, operations research and uh, quality improvement so uh, before i start if if anyone wants to share anything when you have gone through the material your uh, because this is meant to be actually a discussion session this is not something which is a repetition of the uh, knowledge part so if there is any anything you want to share with the group uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself and you can share hi dr anwar this is dr rajesh yes sir yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you. Um, on the qualitative aspect, I mean, I have some experience doing that in the past. And uh, this is one of the, uh, I mean, important of uh, research uh, methodology where you can understand uh, why part of uh, any aspect. So when quantitatively you have some information on suppose loss to follow-ups and other things. Uh, the data doesn't reflect what are the perspectives of the providers or uh, the patients. So to understand why part of that, uh, why they are lost to follow-up, why they are defaulting, all those things, uh, quantitative studies are best methodologies. And uh, this is a very important scientific, I mean, uh, methodology where you can understand perspective of different stake pro stakeholders also. Over. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. And so nice to see you after so after a long time. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. And if you go through the uh, material, it also it talks about the same thing which Dr. Rajesh just mentioned. Um, so it has a couple of videos. Uh, one is on the basics of the uh, qualitative research methods and how those methods are used in implementation science. If you remember last time when we have gone through all those tools, which we can use for implementation science, qualitative research method is one of them. And uh, exactly for the reason which Dr. Rajesh just mentioned, uh, quantitative research gives us evidence uh, in, in, in quantitatively, quantitatively, or it measures things, or it gives uh, uh, the perspective in terms of numbers, or it gives answer to questions of what, what is it, or what is the percentage of loss to follow-up, for example. But we won't understand uh, why the loss to follow-up or why this problem exists or why this barrier exists or or the wh why are these facilitators working in some, pa some patients and not working in others. Not only patients, but otherwise also, if you see, uh, all all these answers are usually, um, we see, uh, are the focus of any qualitative research methods. And the other uh, video is about one of the examples of operational, uh, of the qualitative research from Namibia HIV Disclosure Program. Then there are a uh, couple of reading material and then uh, activities. Uh, so just briefly, I'll skim through uh, the the sessions. Uh, so in implementation science, uh, as we have seen that we are trying to uh, see the tools which can be uh, used and each of this method can itself be one of the courses and it's already there and if you see uh, many other courses of uh, UW, all these uh, methods are uh, courses in details and not only just like one but there are many courses on you know, qualitative research um, and and basically when we say uh, qualitative data it, it it means that we are trying to understand uh, the again why part of it and uh, 
usually this data can be in in terms of uh, uh, codes or in terms of like the 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 way we uh, structure the uh, questionnaires and and the way we understand uh, try to understand the problem in 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 own words of the people who actually are trying to explain the problem uh, and context is the most important thing uh, when we try to understand the quali qualitative uh, data and when we try to get the information from people there are uh, many techniques we use uh, most common one are uh, like elicitation techniques are uh, one to one or in depth interviews or individual interviews and uh, focus group discussions uh, and the questions we use are usually semi structured or we can also have structured questions the main difference is that uh, in in structured questions we don't deviate from uh, the the questions we have already framed and in semi structured we have that flexibility of uh, deviating um, with the like flow of questions and then based on the answers which are being uh, given by the respondent we actually uh, try to rephrase and uh, our questions also so that flexibility is available uh, in in semi structured and unstructured is again is an open interview and in focus group discussion, usually we try to include people from, uh, we try to have people from like mixed background based on the questions we uh, are trying to answer. So if, if the question is, for example, about the, uh, again, same example of loss to follow, what are the barriers and facilitators of uh, uh, for, for on-time pill pickup for HIV positive women, for example? Then we'll include people who are regular on ERT uh, or women who are regular on ERT from uh, some uh, ERT clinic and also those who were lost to follow up. So that there is a good discussion around. So the job of the facilitator is to ask questions and facilitate the discussion and see that if people are uh, getting like enough opportunity or uh, to, to answer those questions. So usually these are like uniform groups, but uh, we make sure that there is a good enough representation of of people who who can actually uh, throw some light on those questions which we are trying to answer. Then other uh, methods are like observation where we do monitoring uh, of people. For example, if we want to see that uh, quality of services being provided by a physician or or maybe like nurses, how they are trying to utilize a particular time, then we can do just observation and we can just see that what are they doing and how they are doing. and Or we can do spot sampling where the time is the essence of it that, okay, at this time we are seeing that what is happening at this particular time and we are trying to record that. And all this is recorded as a, as a, as a script and then we try to analyze that data. Um, and so uh, this takes us to in in this uh, like opportunities to incorporate qualitative data uh, collection in operational research in in implementation science. So where uh, we have a particular hypothesis about con uh, about complex uh, contextual factors, and then we try to identify the reasons for failure or success of those. Uh, and then uh, we pro provide clarity in uh, how to proceed with uh, the translation. And then we again would um, make hypothesis based on that. Um, usually uh, this qualitative research is complementary to uh, the quantitative, uh, where as we said in the beginning, uh, quantitative, if uh, it, it, it answers the question of what, then uh, qualitative will further gives uh, gives us details about why uh, this change has happened. So uh, most of these studies, if we see, uh, are like mixed method studies where one component is usually dominant. Some uh, and 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 in some studies, it will be uh, first there is a qualitative research and then uh, there is a quantitative, or or first there is a qu quantitative and then 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 there is a qualitative. So it is like based on the research question we are uh, trying to ask, and uh, and 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 that's how it is uh, seen. It is basically uh, qualitative to quantitative or quantitative to qualitative.
uh, and lastly in this uh, they have talked about some frameworks which are very common in uh, implementation science uh, for example this frameworks to guide uh, quality qualitative implementation science data collection so cfer is one example of the frameworks which is very commonly used in implementation science this was i guess uh, studied in 2010 or something um, almost 20 years before and there is now a second version of cfer uh, it 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 is a, uh, it is a framework or consolidated framework for implementation uh, research and uh, this is to guide the qualitative uh, data collection and it has a few domains or five domains uh, to be specific uh, characteristics of in intervention and then inner setting outer setting individuals involved and implementation process so these and there are many many uh, frameworks which are used in implementation uh, science uh, and for for different uh, purposes so uh, frameworks like this will be really helpful like for example in in this uh, uh, the the uh, this is basically to inform the uh, uh, data collection but it can be used for many other reasons as well uh, based on the questions again we want to answer so uh, this uh, particular week was uh, all about implement, uh, uh, qualitative research and in the as i just mentioned that in the beginning they try to um uh, explain the what the qualitative research is and how it is different from quantitative research what are different methods which are used to collect the data and organize the data and if you have done uh, qualitative research before it's a it's a uh, it's a process in which you you actually um, through interviews you get all this information from people and then you uh, transcribe all that information and then there is again way to analyze that data uh, by uh, various uh, softwares and and the, um, there are different tools to analyze this kind of data uh, but it's uh, again a, 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 a sort of very structured uh, method to do uh, this type of uh, research and there is obviously a lot to be uh, we, we can get a lot of information from this kind of research in uh, while doing any implementation um, and which can be again fed back into the system to improve the systems um the other video was of the disclosure program, which I just mentioned. So is there anyone else who wants to share anything about their experience on qualitative research and how they have used in the in the improvement of any any kind of implementation or any kind of programs? Okay. Um, it's it will be very useful if you try to relate that to your day to day uh, work, or if you are if you were part of any of the um, the studies or research projects. Then I think it's easy to think in with those examples because sometimes this becomes very uh, academic uh, exercise where we get lost in 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 like for example those frameworks there are uh, tons of frameworks you can see uh, in in uh, uh, qualitative research which people use and these are very like explanatory uh, frameworks sometimes it's we get lost in um, multiple examples so it's about us what works best for us and um, and 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 that's why if if we give or if we put our personal life examples to use while using those frameworks then it is it becomes easy to understand and and, and implement i guess <clears throat> then another uh, week was about quality uh, sorry operational research so again in this there were two uh, basic videos and and then exercises 
and in in this uh there are yeah so operations research is usually uh, i'm i'm sure that many of us uh, have experienced this before uh, may not be in in form of operation research but uh, the 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 way it is conducted is usually um we we use uh, a small change in in a series of events and when we we try to see that if that has um, um has any effect or not so so operation research refers to the research that helps develop solutions to operational uh, operational problems within specific programs so if you are part of a program for example in art center again and if there is a if you have identified a problem and and and, and for example waiting time for the patients to collect medications so if it's a long waiting time for patients to collect medications and then if to end of the day you are seeing that case load is very high in a particular hour of the ART clinic. Then you try to reduce that by distributing the patients over a period of time so that the doctors will not be burdened or ART staff will not be burdened. And also it is easy for the patients to uh, come in in that particular slot and collect medications. So in the whole system of or patient flow, you make a small change and see that if that change is working for you or not. So in the the basic uh, uh, method in which is used in operational is is basically optimization. So you try to optimize the resources which are available and uh, whether to increase or decrease uh, a certain thing or uh, increase or decrease your like a output uh, uh, or outcome variable so it's a uh, in 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 this lecture if you see they have given many examples one of the example was uh, from an uh, automobile industry like toyota uh, just in time so where they tried to uh, break it down to like uh, what are the main um, areas where the improvement improvement can be done to increase the productivity or efficiency or uh, uh, basically how to utilize the resources and reduce the waste uh, to to reduce to reduce the cost on the uh, basic buyer so the, the they have talked about seven waste and how those waste can be eliminated and also they have tried to uh, give examples in the health um, for those waste uh, for example the uh, uh, de reducing the defective products. So in healthcare setting, we can talk about, for example, the uh, expired medications or uh, expired testing kits. So those uh, can be uh, one of the things which can be seen as a uh, as a waste. Then overproduction uh, in in healthcare settings, uh, we can see that compare that with the uh, uh, clinics are uh, not visited by uh, and or or other health products and are not currently in demand which are available then uh, waiting is uh, uh, in, like uh, waiting time for the patients or maybe patients are or people or, or the providers are wasting time in uh, reaching out to the facilities then conveyance so this can be again uh, long distances uh, in the in the healthcare clinic itself the structure itself is not convenient for the uh, providers and also for the patients then for uh, processing or waste which is there in processing we can the one of the examples can be um, unnecessary tests which are uh, used uh, for the for the patients then uh, inventory so uh, again to reduce the uh, waste uh, in terms of like uh, uh, um, expired medications or uh, expired diagnostic tests and uh, and motion. So basically, we try to like eliminate waste to waste 
to increase the efficiency. And they have talked about like uh, three main uh, uses of uh, of of this in the implementation science. So one of the thing is uh, structuring uh, an implementation problem where we uh, break down all these steps of the problem and to see that where exactly how things are positively or negatively affecting a particular step. Uh, like they have given this example of uh, uh, waiting list of the referral referrals and and also effect on admissions. So similarly, there are like multiple. Uh, issues in the in any facility or any uh, uh, setting you are working in and you can break it down to that level and see uh, uh, what is causing that problem so it can be sometimes um, uh, more complicated than a simple uh, flow map uh, or uh, where we see and this usually we use in our uh, settings if you see in the art clinic it's it's we uh, already have flow charts and if we use those to identify these problems or uh, these waste of um, um, uh, time or or maybe like resources, we can easily identify the problems using those flowcharts. And sometimes it again becomes uh, based on uh, how we are trying to use it, it becomes more complicated based on like what uh, problem you're trying to address. Then uh, evaluation, prospective evaluation of the intervention. They have talked about like this and another uh, third one is, uh, they have given like multiple examples for this where you select like uh, by doing uh, uh, op op operations research, you are trying to like uh, uh, through various mechanisms, including mathematical modeling, you are trying to identify the multiple options uh, available to address those problems. So basically, you break down the steps of the issue in in uh, in 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 any kind of implementation or intervention, and then you try to propose multiple options which can uh, affect. Uh, and lastly, they have talked about the uh, strategic uh, reconfiguration of services, in which uh, again through math math mathematical modeling, where you can answer. Uh, you can reach to like one single uh, best solution. Again, that is based on mathematical modeling. Uh, you can, again, for doing this, there are different tools which can be used. Uh, and also you can take help of mathematicians. Uh, and in, 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 in uh, to come up with the best uh, solution possible, uh, we need all that information uh, which which can be accessed from the uh, the providers or the the teams which are actually working on in in the field so if you look at the module itself Yeah, so there is one example which they have shared uh, with us in, in this module, which is uh, about this uh, um, cascade analysis tool of for uh, to reduce leakage in the PMTCT cascade. So where they have talked about the uh, the the uh, the cascade of prevention of mother to child transmission, starting from uh, pregnant women and uh, their their HIV testing in the first trimester or first visit. And then uh, if they are those who are diagnosed positives, and then if uh, they're, uh, they are started on ART or not, and then when the baby is born and then prophylaxis is given or not. So this whole, if you go through the uh, video, they have shared a tool in which, uh, which is open and, and freely available for anyone if they want to use, uh, where, at, at each step of this cascade, uh, we can take some, we, we can see that what is the loss, for example, and then how that 
specific loss is deviated from the uh, targeted uh, number and and how how many patients we are losing at each uh, stage of uh, uh, this particular uh, cascade so if we know that then in in in, in an intervention like a pmt city which has like all this multiple steps uh, so we usually look at only the target population in the beginning and also what we have achieved towards the end. Uh, but there are, this doesn't happen in like a one step loss, but there are all these steps are prone for uh, losses. So using these tools, we can identify uh, which exactly step is um, uh, contributing to the uh, major percentage loss of uh, patients in the cascade. So that it becomes easy for people to take action on those steps um, and, and invest their resources in those steps. So this is again one of the uh, good examples which again can be used in, uh, in, in, in practice. So operation research is another method which is commonly used in implementation science to again inform the, um, 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 the best uh, solutions or solution one solution uh, to 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 solve the um, implementation issues um does anyone have any ideas on about the operational research Okay, uh, so and lastly about quality improvement. Um, again, there are a couple of videos on quality improvement and there are many tools which can be uh, used. And there is one example of a quality improvement exercise. And again, in quality improvement, as name suggests, uh, and we talk about it a lot and we do this. All these things we do in the, especially operational research uh, methods, we, we actually use in our day-to-day -day programming and also quality improvement exercises. So they have focused on one specific uh, method, which is PDSA, uh, Plan, Do, Study, and Act. So where uh, we plan an intervention, we, we do that intervention, and then we see how, if that is, has worked or not, and then we again act on our findings. So uh, I think uh, in, in this, all these tools which they have shared are really useful and which are very practical and can be used in day-to-day -day, uh, uh, work. So uh, it's really like self-explanatory. So there is, I don't think uh, there is a need to have a separate discussion on that again unless someone has any anything to share or discuss. So um, quality improvement is, um, again, there are many, many tools and, and um, these days we talk about it separately or, or try to focus on that as a specific activity, but usually it is very much incorporated within the systems. Um, and, but uh, if, it, unless it is done as a separate activity, it, it is not uh, focused. And in, in ART clinic or, or any programmatic setting, I, I guess. So if uh, one facility can have or can run multiple uh, PDSA cycles at one time, uh, for example, and it can be as at, at as smaller level as like a, having some change or trying to improve something at one uh, clinicians or doctors level for example if you uh, identified a problem and you have proposed a solution and you don't want to uh, involve everyone in the beginning without seeing if without testing it then at, you can test it at very small level and see if that is working or not and you can give that at uh, that a certain time uh, that for one month you will see that if this works with this one physician or not, and if that works with one physician for one month, you'll you'll see that uh, you'll try to study the results that uh, how that has changed or improved 
the uh, performance of uh, that specific part of the program. And if that has happened, then you can uh, think about scaling up to the other uh, other people of the same clinic. So this is called as like one PDSA cycle or one specific uh, continuous quality improvement activity, CQI activity. So in one clinic at the same time, if you want, you can run like multiple CQI, uh, CQI cycles uh, with, with multiple people and with multiple uh, uh, programmatic interventions. And, and overall, then you can see that if the quality is improving or, or not. So they have talked about this tool uh, or PDSA cycles, uh, which can be easily used in, uh, in our day-to-day uh, -day settings. So I guess, like I said, uh, all these resources you can download and save uh, for your further use. And there are like another reading um, um, materials which they have shared with us. So I know, so these uh, three weeks, uh, these sessions were really heavy, I guess, in terms of their, uh, uh, because like I said, each one of it, one of this method is, there can be a separate course on that. It is very difficult to uh, compile that in one session, but I think uh, these weeks modules give a good summary of the the the, the topic of of the week. So, uh, if you are interested in in these uh, any of this specific thing, you can go in depth of taking like another courses on those specific topics. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's that's it uh, from me. So if you, anyone wants to share anything or uh, try to like want to bring up anything based on their readings of the material, please go ahead and you can unmute yourself and we can discuss. If you if you have, I, uh, I don't know about the timelines, but uh, whether you have seen this material or not, but if not, uh, uh, please go through the videos at least, because that will give you a general summary of the entire uh, topic. Otherwise, it is really uh, difficult to uh, read through the like entire material and try to understand things. At least see the videos, and uh, um, and obviously those tools you can download and save with you for uh, your use, and it's. Uh, and once you see uh, the the material and once you see the videos, then if you discuss that with someone, that will be really useful. That's what I think. Uh, because then you will get to know, uh, because that's how I think I try to like understand things because many of these things we don't use uh, in our practice. Uh, as a, many of you might be like clinicians and may not be involved in research all the time. And uh, some, sometimes we get lost in, in all these uh, research-based discussions. But uh, if we try to relate that with our day-to-day -day, uh, work, then it becomes easy to understand, I guess. And that's why uh, if you try to discuss that with someone within your cohort or in the groups, it, it is usually very useful. Okay, I think then we can stop. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, please go through the material and and uh, see the if you can like finish the assignments in time. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Valen. Thank you. Bye. For this course, a uh, university has allowed group work, so people are working in groups and uh, trying to complete the assignments by the time. Oh, great. great, yeah, it's wonderful. Thank you again, sir. Thank you to all the participants for joining us. Uh, we'll uh, announce the uh, next session uh, nearing the session date. Thank you.